Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this week's video. This week I'm turning a vase and I'm adding pyrography and some painting to the vase as well. So stick around and I hope you enjoy. So I marked a center and I'm using this uh, live center. I'll be turning between centers until I make a tenon, making sure it's tight in the chuck and it's between centers on the lathe and I'm testing out the speed. So using the bowl gouge here to make the, the block of wood round. And I take a couple, two or three passes and then I speed up the lathe um, as it gets a little bit more stable. So I stop here just to tighten everything up in case it's moved at all. Again with the bowl gouge continuing to make some passes uh, here at a, at a higher speed. I believe I'm around 1100 RPMs here. Almost completely round. Starting to shape the vase here with the bowl gouge. And where I'm shaping there uh, towards the chuck, that's going to be the bottom. Uh, so I've taken the tailstock off and cut a little length off of it off camera and refining the shape here with the bowl gouge. Switch over to the skew chisel and just taking some passes to get the taper um, from the bottom to the top um, exactly how I want it. Doing a little bit of sanding here before I apply some denatured alcohol and then more sanding after that. Here's the denatured alcohol. This will clean the dust off of the surface and also raise the grain. Sanding sealer here. And uh, some scotch bright pad or steel wool to abrade the surface. Here I'm using a pencil to mark an area where I'm going to be doing some pyrography. Kind of one on the lower third. So just eyeballing it, not, not really measuring, just seeing what looks good. So here's the pyrography pen. And uh, the idea here that I had is in the area I marked out with a pencil just to fill with a small dots to make a small feature on the vase. And I'm a to total beginner uh, with the pyrography pen so if you have if any of you are experts or have a lot of um, uh, experience with pyrography let me know any tips and tricks in the comments I'd appreciate it.
So finished with topography and uh, using a Forstner bit to uh, hog out most of the material in the vase. Take a couple passes here. And this this was pretty easy to um, hollow out as far as vases go. The, the wood wasn't uh, too difficult to work with. And refining the shape of the top a little bit with the bowl gouge and also using the bowl gouge here to uh, finalize the thickness of the vase. As you can see, this, this would produce a lot of dust rather than shavings. I mean, there were some shavings, but uh, some dust. Here I switched to the Easy Wood Tools hollower, uh, number one hollower. Just trying to finalize the shape. And here is my uh, very um, sophisticated sanding stick. Used some sandpaper and taped it around the turning tool here. Sanding sealer for the inside. And as I watch this video, I'm, I'm looking at the outside and thinking from, from this angle, uh, it doesn't look too bad, but I was not happy with it at the time. And um, as you can see at the bottom of the base near the chuck, I had, there's some black there and I had stained the vase black um, after I had taped off the middle with the pyrography, but I wasn't happy with that. So uh, I turned and sanded it off here and I'm gonna try something different basically erased it and started over. Here I'm using some Hampshire Sheen intrinsic colors. This is plum and now I'm using black. The idea here was to get a base coat and then put some color on it. some Gilder's Paste Wax, and this is to use on the pyrography around the middle of the base. Preparing some blue acrylic paint, which I'll apply with the paintbrush, uh, some of it with the lathe running and some of it without. The thought process I had here was to layer some different colors over the black to try to give the, the vase some depth. Uh, certainly wasn't anything very specific I was going for, uh, just sort of playing with the paint and seeing what I liked. Really, I think this turned out to be kind of an abstract kind of turning in the end. Some pinkish purple acrylic paint applying with a different kind of brush here, as you can see, uh, sort of a, a, a wider paintbrush to try to get uh, some different effects with the paint. And I wanted to take a moment to give a special thank you to some new patrons that PF Word Turning has, to Melanie, Michael, and Khalid. Thank you so much for your support. It is truly appreciated and helps me continue what I do here on YouTube. Um, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon member for PF Wood Turning, there's a link in the video description. Um, and support can be as low as a dollar or two or 
as much as you want per month. So check it out if you have any interest. No pressure whatsoever. I want to thank all my subscribers. And if you're watching and you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I have uh, at least one new video every week, sometimes two. And after a little bit more blue over the two coats of pinkish purple, I'm applying two coats of spray lacquer for the finish. And after that dries, I take it off the lathe and uh, sand to the bottom, as you'll see here in a second, using the parting tool. using a chisel, chisel to take off the little knob that was left from parting it off of the lathe. And some hand sanding to make the bottom flat. And once I seal the bottom, uh, the project is done. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. It is truly appreciated. Thank you for your continued support. And until next week, peace out.